from the first offer, and it's by the Ronnie Richardson. Tied in for more, number 90, Matt Anderson. Here's the number Matt, our small Kevin and Tim Anderson, and his brother Jeff. Next up is tied in from Silver, Oklahoma, number 81, Chris Hammond. Jim Kirk in the field, and his brother Kevin Kelly. Opposite line is for Dallas, number 76, Al Basinger. Here today with Al, with his parents, Rosie and Albert Basinger. Opposite line is for Latin, Oklahoma, number 72, Scott Kimpanen. Here today with Scott and his wife, Christina. Opposite line is for Midwest City, number 70, Reese Travis. Here today with Reese, old friends, Sheila and Charles, and his daughter, Bob. Next is opposite lineman for Moore, number 63, Jason Bronson. Joining Jason on the field is his brother, Lisa Bronson, and his father and stepmother, Dan and Donna Bronson. Next is opposite lineman for Mustang, number 59, Bubba Virtue. Here's the name of Bubba, our current senior and team merchant, and a senior today for Linda Stacey. Running back from Coldwater, number 39, Buster Coon. Joining us on the field are Terrence Barney and Jack Hood. Next is full back from Muskogee, number 35, Seth Luttrell. <laughs> the first of the team is the first of the team. Seth is wearing his father's former student number 42. Here today with Seth are his parents Judy and former student Jim Luttrell and his sister Lucy and her family. He missed it back from Lott, number 31, Marvin Shoulders. Joining Marvin on the field is his mother Mary Lockhart and his son Markwell and his mother Sessa. He hits the back from Brooklyn, New York, number 27, Brent Jackson. He was friends with his mother, Dion Jackson. Quarterback from Florida, number 16, Patrick Fletcher. Joining back from today, our son, Tim Lockhart Fletcher, and his brother, sister in law, Paul and Joy Fletcher. Free safety from Norman, number 15, J.T. Thatcher. Next is quarterback from Aberdeen, South Dakota, number 14, Jeff Hubbard. Here we go to the Lord's Cup, sitting in the real team level in the district of Greece. Quarterback from Homestead, Florida, number 11, Ante Jones. Here we go to the Lord's Cup, Ante Jones, and his sister Brenda is Uncle Al Brody. Next is linebacker from Miami, Florida, number 10. Torrance Marshall. Then the next to the left is Torrance Marshall. And he's going to the left and he's still going to the left and he's still going to the left. Linebacker from El Rico, number 9, Roger Stephan. Here's the name of Roger, our head coach, Cheryl and Mark Stephan. Also, we'd like to recognize our senior managers, Wes Edwards from Edmund, and Bud Brewer from Ulladon, and senior trainers, Tara Horgan, and Jessica Hogner, and Katie Fogel. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the University of Oklahoma in honor of our 2007 Senior Club.
That will be filling in your part 11 yards on the return. First down center is from the Texas Tech Bowling. Jess Heidel is in her quarterback. Pick up a seven yard brings up the second and three from the nine. Two yards back to the 11-yard line. 
where he brings them third and five. He then moves the ball half to the 26 yard line and brings the third and 20. the first period of 
this ball game between Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Oklahoma almost scored on their first offensive play on a sweep down the left side off of a reverse. They were stopped by Texas Tech only because the runner stepped out of bounds, and that was Antoine Savage. And then the defense of Texas Tech held Oklahoma, blocked the field goal attempt at a nice return, and now they are at the 40-35 yard line, fourth down and inches to go for the first down. Quarterback sneak leaning forward, needed, oh, maybe the length of the football, maybe not quite that much, and it'll be close again. I do believe from where the officials are going to make the spot that he will pick up the first down. It's a, a great call by Texas Tech. You, your team needs the momentum. You've blocked a field goal already. You're hanging in there with, with Oklahoma. Let's, let's look at the blocked field goal first. We go back. Oklahoma got the ball after holding him three and out. The blocked field goal right, just right up the middle. Defensive lineman gets his hand up. Texas Tech picks it up, carries it back to about their own 50, then just converted a fourth and inches a moment ago. Kingsbury with pressure comes out throwing to the left side to the 29-yard line. This is Ricky Williams on the receiving end. That is the 48th reception of the year for Ricky Williams. Torrance Marshall and Derek Strait making the stop for Oklahoma. And as Reggie had mentioned earlier, for Texas Tech to pull off the upset, they have to have the perfect ball game. They really do. They well, can't afford to make any mistakes. They're looking good so far. Double slot on the near side for a wide receiver. Fake of the pass and a handoff on the reverse. Does not fool Oklahoma. Ricky Williams is dropped for a loss. Back to about the 33 of the 34 yard line by Corey Heineke. Williams two years ago was the number four rusher in college football and then last year in the first game of the of the uh, year he had a knee injury had knee surgery never really come back to that greatness that he had two years ago hasn't really and it's hard to know whether it's just he's not all the way back or whether the system of offense has changed so he doesn't get that many carries anymore third down and nine following the loss Kingsbury throws over the middle pass is complete it will be the first down this is Tim Baker this is the big receiver for Texas Tech. He is 6'5", a 202-pound senior, a big target, and he handles himself well when he gets out of space. Baker does a great job. He was in zone coverage right there, and he just watching him on film, he runs great routes. He finds the open seam when it's zone. He does a good job of shielding when it's man-to-man, -man, and he always makes the catch when the ball comes to him. Kalmus and Thatcher on the stop. It is a first down. Kingsbury again to throw better protection. This one is tipped. It is intercepted by Oklahoma. Could be a sooner touchdown off of the return. This is J.D. Thatcher. Thatcher down the sideline. He is to the 20, the 10, and close in for the score. J.T. Thatcher has played a little bit of everything. He's been a quarterback, a running back, a safety. He returns punts. A few weeks ago, he lost his starting job to Brandon Everidge. Coach told us he was going to Thatcher was going to start today because of senior day. And right off the bat, he makes a huge play to stop a drive for Texas Tech and take it into the end zone. His seventh interception of the season. He ranks fourth nationally in interception. The extra point attempt is up. And it is good. And Oklahoma takes the early lead. They're out in front by a score of seven to nothing as we take another look. And as you look at this ball, a tipped ball is the enemy of the offense. This ball gets tipped early, and it once it starts tumbling, JT Thatcher just makes a great move to get to the ball, and then he's off to the races. Kingsbury had one quick chance, but nobody was going to catch him after that. You only have to get one foot in. What an exciting play for J.T. Thatcher. And I know he was disappointed, certainly, from a few weeks ago when he lost the, the starting job. And the coaches said he was just a little bit inconsistent with the coverages, the discipline of being in the right place on run stopping. So they brought in Brandon Everett, the redshirt freshman. But Thatcher is a great player, and he, he makes big plays. The Sooners have at least 
one interception in the last 12 games, 26 interceptions totally in those 12 games, and six of the 26 have been returned for touchdown. When you got defensive linemen up front who are having the discipline to rush, 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 and when they feel that timer go off to get a hand in the air, you're going to create tipped balls, and that contributes to your interception total. Every offensive coordinator cringes once the, any ball gets tipped because that's terrible for the offense, generally good news for the defense. Paul McClendon is the deep back on the return. Tim Duncan will be kicking off for Oklahoma. Oklahoma up by a score of seven and I think this is a low live drive shot that just buries itself to the back edge of the end zone. For the touchback, he'll bring it out to the 20-yard line where Texas Tech, again, will have the ball. This will be their third opportunity in offense. Their first opportunity were three and out. The second was following the turnover after blocking the field goal attempt. That ended with the interception. So they have made the mistakes. It has cost them dearly. They've made, the, and they couldn't afford to make any mistakes in this game against Oklahoma. They have to guard against now getting a letdown because, you know, Cliff Kingsbury there, the quarterback, he's the guy who's going to lead them. They just need to come out and know that they can play with Oklahoma. Kingsbury, and he waits too long and takes the sack. That is the 28th time that he has been sacked this year. Our lineups, we've got number 72, Rex Richards tackle. He is the best athlete on that offensive line. As we continue with our Chili's lineups, the backs and receivers. Number 81, Tim Baker. We've already seen him today. He's the go-to guy. He's got 65 catches now this season, most in the Big 12. Third down and 15. Kingsbury, a quick drop, quick out to the near side. Nice fake by the receiver, breaking through the open field. And headed down the middle is Wes Welker, who is from Oklahoma City. Wes Welker, he is a true freshman. He came in here, and, and most of the time, freshmen are going to get redshirted. They run the little screen pass, a call that I don't like on third and 15. But Wes Welker, if he's going to be a playmaker, he takes this thing up the middle, makes about three guys miss, and then just turns on the Jets. But he comes in, he's a true freshman. They just say he has such a knack for making plays, they have to get him on the field. Monte Jones stops him at the 41-yard line. 49 yards on the play. First down for Texas Tech. Four wide receivers. Handoff for the running game. And the flip-flop, Shad Williams, is dropped. Now, let's take a look at the Chili's lineup for the defense. In Oklahoma, they count on their front four to get good pressure without the blitz. That's the defensive line. Now let's go to the linebacker. Marshall and Kalmus are the tag team studs on the defense. All right, we'll save the secondary. We're ready to go. Kingsbury from the shotgun. Four-man rush. Has time. Finds a man open right side. A couple of yards after the catch by Shad Williams. To around the 34-yard line. It's going to be third down and about three yards to go. Now let's pick up the secondary. Keep an eye on number 38, strong safety Roy Williams. He'll make a lot of plays today. And we've already seen J.T. Thatcher with a big interception return for a touchdown. 85 yards on the touchdown return. Third down and three from the shotgun. Going deep. It is caught, but out of bounds. This is Charlie Jones and Reggie Rivers. We have five minutes and 17 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. And Oklahoma is up by a score of seven to nothing. And that is courtesy of the interception by J.D. Thatcher, who returned it 85 yards for the score. And now Texas Tech is trying to get it back. They're going to gamble on fourth down and three. Kingsbury, the quarterback, steps back, set over the middle, and the crowd incomplete. Ricky Williams, the intended receiver. Oklahoma will take over on down. They gambled on fourth and inches a couple of drives ago. Doesn't work out this time. All right, we'll step aside. We'll be back in just a moment.
Five minutes and 13 seconds. Time remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma is up by a score of seven to nothing. Over Texas Tech, they will start now from their own 34-yard line. Their leader is the quarterback, number 14, Josh Heupel. And he comes out firing here. The reception is Damian Mackey. Puts a fake to the right. Comes back to the inside. Picks up some yardage after the catch. A total of eight. Now, here's the Chili's Oklahoma starting lineup versus the offensive line. Number 59, Bubba Burcham. He's the center. Extremely intelligent player. He makes all the calls for the line. Back to the receiver. Number 22, running back Quentin Griffin. He scored 15 TDs this year, all rushing. Second down and a yard to go. The ball now at the 43-yard line. They put the, the formation into the sideline here. The handoff to Quentin Griffin. And he should pick up the first down. He needs to get almost to the 45-yard line. Let's check out the Texas Tech defensive line. Kaserik and Wyatt are the inside tackles. The only truly defensive linemen out there. The other two guys are linebackers. And speaking of linebackers, here are the three. Number 51, Flugents, the middle linebacker. He's the number four tackler in the nation, averages 13 tackles a game. And now with a sneak, just trying to pick up the first down, which is successful. And we'll go back to the secondary of Texas Tech. Number 31, strong safety, Kevin Curtis. He's everywhere. I love this kid. He's always around the ball. And we have a flag on the play. Second flag of the ball game thus far. Illegal motion, Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Now, ordinarily, a five is the smallest penalty you can get. When you've got third and inches, though, a five-yard penalty, penalty is the world. There's Bob Stoops. Coach at Oklahoma has done such a great job with this team. Came in here last year and has really turned this program around. going to taking his time sets and it's knocked away it is incomplete, incomplete. lemon makes the block defensively for Texas Tech and so the Red Raiders make a stand get lemons and Josh audibles he gets ready to throw and lemons just does a good job of getting his hand up what the offensive lineman has to do whenever a guy wants to get his hand up and jump you've got to shove him in his upper body push him onto the ground to try to stop him from blocking the pass that time and to discourage him from jumping in the future Ferguson will kick it away Wes Welker is the return man Good catch. Walker takes it to the 25-yard line. There's about three, maybe four yards on the return, and that's going to be it. 37 yards on the kick, a four-yard return. Back in a moment. Remember last week, if you're an Oklahoma fan, it was an interception return for a touchdown that set up that ball game that comes behind victory over Texas A&M. Oklahoma continues that. Thus far, J.T. Thatcher's 85-yard interception return to score of the ball game. Sooners lead it 7-0. Kingsbury being chased to the outside once he gets outside the tackle, chased by Eric uh, Thenander. Then he threw the ball away. All right, college football and ABC Sports is brought to you by the 2001 Aztec from Pontiac. Quite possibly the most versatile vehicle on the planet. By Chili's Ranch Hand Filet, tender, juicy, flame grilled, and served on a bit of awesome blossom string. By Courtyard, by Marriott, the hotel designed for business travelers, and by National Car Rentals. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And here we go. Texas Tech not wasting any time. We have that spread offensive set. Three wide receivers trips to the bottom of your screen. The pass is complete to Welker. And he's going to pick up about six yards out to the 35-yard line. That is the craziest offensive set <laughs> I've ever seen. They had three guys up at the top of the field, three guys down at the bottom of the field, and then three offensive linemen in the middle. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that, but Mike Leach is pulling all the stops out. Third down and four. Fake of the inside handoff. Rolling to the right. Throwing tip incomplete. Flags are going to fly. 
The ball may have been tipped before it got there, and if it had, and if it was tipped, then you cannot have pass interference. I think it got tipped right around the linebacker area, which would wave off the pass interference. We believe Ante Jones tipped the ball, or Tim Baker. We'll have to wait and see. Ooh. We'll have to take a look at this on the replay to see. Let's take a, a look at this ball, see if it gets tipped by the underneath receiver. This ball comes. Oh, no. Maybe it didn't get tipped. So it got there just a little bit early. Ante Jones jumped the gun. Yes, he did. <laughs> And, uh, and he, he didn't jump the gun. He jumped the can. He <laughs> nailed it. Ooh. Is that Tim Baker that he hit? Well, it's a first down at the 47-yard line. No tip. Just a wobbly pass. It was a wobbly pass, <laughs> but... The running game of Texas Tech, Ricky Williams, has a yard. Now, what they did just now is what we're going to see a lot of, and I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Let's take a look at our Dell solutions for this game. First of all, for Texas Tech on offense, they've got to score more than 30 points. They've got to hang in there, and they cannot afford to have a single turnover in this game, which they've already done. For Oklahoma's defense, pressure Kingsbury to force mistakes, and solid tackling after the catch. Don't give up the big play. And don't go away because Texas Tech has speeded up their offensive set. They're not wasting any time. That's a backward pass. He can throw it. He does downfield. It is complete at the 41-yard line, then inside the 40. And you are right, Mike Leach, the head coach of Texas Tech, offensive uh, coordinator for Oklahoma last year. Those first two, Mickey Peters, who was signed as a quarterback. He's now a wide receiver. He then throws to the junior King Scoville down the sideline. They had four guys sitting out there in formation. I mean, they're like lined up in a little diamond formation out there. You just don't see it, but it works. First down at the 38-yard line. Steps, throws. Pass is complete to the far side. This is Wes Welker. And Welker goes to around the 33-yard line. The Oklahoma defense reacting very quickly after the catch and holding, basically holding Texas Tech to small yardage on each game. But right now, the Red Raiders are beginning to pick up the pace of that offense in this working group. I think the Red Raiders are, are causing some matchup problems for Oklahoma by with these weird formations. Four wide receivers, pass is complete. Nice open field tackle. Tim Baker was the receiver, and he was cut down by Roy Williams. Here's the touchdown. And watch this ball by Kingsbury. He gets tipped. And then Thatcher takes the thing all the way to, to the end zone. So that was on the second drive for Texas Tech today. 85-yard interception touchdown return. Right flat pass is complete. Ricky Williams, now he has been on the receiving end. Roy Williams, no relation, makes the tackle. I think it's interesting that Texas Tech in this game so far has thrown very few balls down the field. They've had about four or five passes that have gone down the field. Most of their passes have been the swing passes, the quick screens to the wide receivers. Now they've got a fourth and four. They've gone for it twice on fourth down. They're thinking about it. looks like they're going to go for it again. You know, Coach Mike Strait, he is not pulling any punches here against Oklahoma. And Texas Tech wants to talk it over. They'll call for a timeout. That stops the clock with 43 seconds left to go in the first quarter. The Sooners are up 7-0. Fourth down and three, the ball on the 31-yard line. Once again, Texas Tech trailing by seven. They go for it. Trip, three wide receivers near side. One to the right. Looks right all the way. Throws has his man almost clear, almost intercepted. It is incomplete. That was fourth down, Oklahoma holes. J.T. Thatcher almost had number two in the ball game. That, As Thatcher Oklahoma the holes, and uh, they take over on down. Thatcher wasn't starting for a couple of weeks, lost a starting spot, but he's back into this game, and he's already got one pick, almost got another one right there. It's all down to one final night, two contestants, one really big surprise. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Celebrity Edition? This is the one that you don't want to miss tomorrow at 9, 8 Central here on ABC. You don't want to miss this one either.
Oklahoma at their own 31 yard line. Hypo back to throw. Right flat, and it is dropped right on target. This kid is so accurate, and this was to Quentin Griffin, who's got pretty good hands, yeah. but that just happens, particularly, I think, to a running back. He decides he, he wants to run <laughs> before he has full possession. Right. That ball was a little bit high. We got to remember Quentin's a only little five, bit high. seven. <laughs> but you know what? That's the toughest, one of the toughest passes to throw and one of the toughest to catch, the swing pass, because your angle of departure is so weird. And uh, I think for the back end for the quarterback, it's tough. Josh does a good job of throwing it, though. This will be the ninth offensive play of the ball game for Oklahoma. Tech has run 26 offensive plays. <laughs> Josh Norman. Josh Norman has a, a couple of brothers playing for Texas Tech. John Norman. Number 38, who's a linebacker, and the uh, younger brother, the freshman, Joe Norman, who is on special teams. I wonder if John Norman will take it easy on his brother if he ever has to tackle him today. No, they said no. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> well, actually, uh, uh, John might, because uh, they won last year, John and Texas Tech, and uh, they had the bragging rights over the Christmas holidays. And we now come to the official end of the first quarter. And after one is in the book, number one Oklahoma leads seven, nothing. Set to start the second period, third down and nine, the ball at the 32 yard line, Oklahoma in possession in their own territory. They lead by a score of seven to nothing. Eiffel with all the time in the world. He's an effective runner, great athlete. Sets, throws deep down the sideline, and it is caught! Curtis Fagan down the sideline, timing himself with the throw. 55 yards on the play. It was third and nine. Paul McClinton was right there defensively for Texas Tech. And this is what Josh Heifel does so well. He starts running to the right, and it doesn't matter whether he sets his feet, just kind of flings this thing across his body. It looks like it's going to be way overthrown. That thing flutters down, perfectly hits Fagan in stride. And he, he's done this all year. It, once or twice, you might say, oh, it's just a lucky throw. But over and over and over again, 67% completion. And with the coverage, it had to be a perfect throw. The give to the first man coming across on the reverse. And that is Josh. That's Josh Fumbled. Norman. Fumbled. So now... <laughs> Antoine Alexander, that ball popped out of his arms right into the hands of Antoine Alexander, and he stepped right out of bounds with it. The strangest thing, the, the timing on that handoff, first of all, I was impressed they even got that ball handoff. He just gets hit, the ball comes whoop, right out. Antoine Alexander does a great job of being alert. And so Texas Tech now, their second big play of the game, the first one was the blocked field goal of Oklahoma's. Now they get a fumble recovery. And they have the ball at the 12-yard line. Paul McClendon forced the play defensively for the Red Raiders. Kingsbury with three wide receivers to the right side. He comes with a pass. It's complete again. It's short yardage, but effective to Wes Welker. Now let's go to John Saunders in New York. Well, Charlie, it's time for the Burger King update. K-State against Missouri. Josh Scobie from a yard out takes it in. They went at 28 to 24. And with that victory, K-State hoping for a rematch with Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. We're back here in Norman, Oklahoma. 16-yard line, second down. Second down and six. Kingsbury to throw, far side, has a man open, hits him for the first down and out at the 30-yard line. And that's Derek Dora. That is his 50th reception on the year. He has nine touchdowns receiving, and he picked up 14 yards on this play. Michael Thompson and Ante Jones had the defensive coverage. And that's the kind of play that you would expect to see from Kingsbury. You look at his passing yards so far under Coach Leach, 3,100 yards. He's already broken the, the single-season record here at Texas Tech. Last year, he came in. His first game was against Oklahoma, and he led the Red Raiders to beat Oklahoma. And he's on target again. Again, it's short yardage, about three yards on the play. You, you almost think that 
uh, Coach Leach came out and said, okay, we're going to unsettle Oklahoma first by throwing them all these weird, funky formations. We're going to put offensive linemen outside. We're going to move them all around. These are the guys who, who Coach Leach has coached. Kingsbury is the most recent. He recruited high school at OU and had uh, uh, Tim Eric Crouch. Eric Couch. Tim Couch. Tim Couch, Tim Couch at Kentucky. Three wide receivers after the motion, right side. Pass is complete again to the right side. And again, it's Wes Welker, who the yeah, local homeboy from Walker. Oklahoma City is getting a handful of action yeah, in the ballgame. Your homeboy. Yes. <laughs> One of your homeboys? So far in the ballgame, Texas Tech has run 29 offensive plays. Oklahoma has run 11. Who would have Almost, but not quite, 3 to 1. But for Texas Tech, their undoing has been Three times they've gotten into the red zone, twice they've turned it over on downs, and once they had the interception return for a touchdown. Welker, five receptions for 64 yards for the Red Raiders. Here's the pitch around the corner, not quite there. Ricky Williams could not get outside, look for the block. Torrance Marshall and Ante Jones were there for Oklahoma. So now the real question is, is Texas Tech going to go for it on their own 40-yard line? They've gone for it three times now, but all the, those times they were down in um, Oklahoma's end of the field. It is fourth down and one, and you have a feeling that they simply have to punt the football. Look at Ricky Williams' numbers in 1998, 1,500 yards. He, you know, he was the fourth leading rusher in the nation. Everybody thought he was going to take off. He got a knee injury in 99, sat out the whole season. Now he's back only 454 yards this year, and it's hard to know whether he's not healthy or whether the offense has changed. Fourth down in a yard. They go for it. And now they take the timeout. I they were looking to pick up the offsides of the motion or somebody getting a little anxious. And the five-yard penalty and the first down, it didn't work for them. They take the timeout. Sooners lead it, seven, nothing. Fourth and one, this was the offensive set attack. They're not going to fool anybody with this. They're trying to draw them off sides. They need to have two eye backs back there lined up like they're really going to run a play to just come up with your only option is, at least the look is that you're going to run a, a quarterback sneak. You're not going to fool someone with the jumping off sides. Great house will kick it away. J.T. Thatcher is the return man, kicks it away from him, comes over, takes it, drops the ball. Texas Tech can recover it. They may have done that. They say they've got it, and they do. The Red Raider will have the ball at the 21-yard line of Oklahoma. 41 yards on the kick, and Marcus Turner is the man who recovered it for Texas Tech. And Thatcher is just trying to make a play there. He's a playmaker, but it's, it's a bad decision. If you've got to sprint that hard over to your left to try to get to a ball, the kick is a little bit short. He is running, 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 and he's going to be that close. And so, you know, the ball gets on the ground. He tries to get to it, but Texas Tech recovers another big play by Texas Tech, and this is exactly what they need to give themselves a chance against Oklahoma. And Paul McClendon is the man who made it all happen for the Red Raiders. Thatcher, that has scored the only touchdown of the ball game, and now he gives it back. So he is even the ledger in anyway. <laughs> Hero to goat. It doesn't take long. He's very... High and incomplete is the overthrows as it is receiver, Daryl Jones. Jones is 6'3", not quite as tall as he wanted to be. Monday night, it's a must-win situation for Washington. They face the St. Louis Rams. Deion Sanders and Bruce Smith could be in for a, a trackney trying to contain Trent Green and his speedy receiver. Trent Green really coming on as a quarterback. Monday night football live at 9 Eastern, 7 you know, the St. Louis Rams have not lost a beat despite the injuries, despite the problems. They are still performing at a high level. Four wide receivers on the left side. So it's a screen out in front, but well played by Oklahoma. Ricky Williams pulls it in. He had potentially three blockers in front, but Roy Williams, you said he'd be everywhere making plays, and he does it right here. <laughs> he sure is. And, you know, I, I love these formations that we're seeing. They're putting four guys out there, that little diamond formation. It really creates some problems for Oklahoma. They've got to figure out how to match up with that. You can't play them too close, because what if they all come off and start running routes? Now you're bumping into your own coverage, guys, and somebody comes open. So I think it creates some problems for them. Oklahoma leads by a score of 7 to nothing. 10 minutes, 58 seconds. Time remaining in the first half. 
Takes him a little handoff, and now a swing into the right flat. Pass is complete to Shad Williams. But again, most of the plays are going for short yardage or at the line of scrimmage. They really haven't been that effective going vertical or going downfield. With a passer like Kingsbury, you would think that Mike Leach would be calling plays that go down the field. Let him, let him throw the ball 10 yards, 15 yards, 20 yards, especially when you're looking at a, a third and 15 situation, which they just have. But most of their passes, as you said, their swing passes are the really short passes. Here's the field goal attempt on fourth and 13 from the 32-yard line, an attempt of 42 yards. And it is good. Chris Burko. Seven, three, back in a moment. This is Charlie Jones and Reggie Rivers. We've got a good one on our hands. A little over 10 minutes to go in the first half. The Sooners now lead by a score of 7-3. to three. There has not been an offensive touchdown in the ballgame. The touchdown for the Sooners was an interception return of 85 yards. And that was by uh, J.T. Thatcher. And then we just had the successful field goal by Chris Burko. An Oklahoma field goal attempt was blocked earlier. Clinton Greathouse is going to kick off with Thatcher and Savage as the deep back. And he pulled in at the five-yard line by Thatcher. Great shot right at the middle. Good return. Not near the 30-yard line. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough by Pacific Life Annuities Insurance Investment. Use the power of Pacific Life by BASF. We don't want to make a lot of products you buy. We make a lot of products you buy better and by Dell. Oklahoma now in offense from their own 29-yard line first down. Josh Heupel will look to get things going. They haven't had the ball very much. They've only run 11 plays of offense so far. Texas Tech has done a good job of hanging on to it. Heupel from the shotgun. Here's a little shovel pass right up the middle. The pass is complete to Quentin Griffin. Both ball clubs use that play. In fact, they almost use the, the, uh, the same offense themselves. Let's look at our Dell solutions for Oklahoma's offense. They need to have a balanced attack. So far, there are five runs, six passes. And they want to spread the ball around. You can't have a favorite receiver in this offense. For Texas Tech on defense, control the running game. OU gets you spread out, and then they run it. And have timely blitzes. You can't afford to come every play, because Hypo will eat you alive. Three wide receivers on the near side. Hypo wanted protection to his right. Asked for it. Looks left. Left-hander throws left. He is right on target. Passes complete to Andre Wolfall. Uh, to Wolfall. And he's going to pick up the first down. Wolfall does a good job there of sitting down. Texas Tech was playing in a zone, but it didn't really look like they had a guy who was supposed to be short in the zone. They had, or maybe they had a bus there, but both guys were kind of sitting back. They come up and make the tackle, but not until after Wolfall got the first down. At the 43-yard line. Incomplete. One thing that the coaches keep telling us this and telling us this, and that was just savage. It was incomplete, right on target. But until you see it time after time after time again, his high is so accurate. He is, he is oh. extremely accurate. Almost for, doesn't matter what body position he's throwing from. That time, I think we had an incompletion that was a combination. Wait a minute. Oh. Now, you described him as a, as a basketball player. Yes. He is like a, a great shooter on a basketball court. He's moving around. He's, you know, his, his body's in weird positions, but he finds a way to put it into the, into the hole. And for Heifel, the same way with his passes, he can put his ball right on target, even if his body's in bad shape. His body's in bad shape, but he is always in bad. And again, he shows it off. And he goes to Damian Mackey. And Mackey will pick up about eight yards on the play. Every game, a game of turnovers, and this was the first one. T.J. Thatcher. Yep. And then you have the fumble there that gets recovered by Antoine Alexander. Then T.J. Thatcher makes the fumble in the other direction. And that cost him three points because that ended up in the successful field goal by Texas Tech. So Thatcher is plus four on the day, <laughs> or plus, plus three. He scored six. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's plus three for the day. <laughs> 
Third down on a long yard to go with the first down. Has the receiver wide open. Antoine Savage for 16 yards. That time it was definitely a bust. They ended up Texas Tech with two defenders covering one guy outside. Watch number one, and I believe 31 is going to be uh, Curtis. They both end up outside. Nobody is on Savage on the inside. So he's wide open to get the first down. And mark it at the 33-yard line. First down. Leap to the left side, has the hole. Blocker takes the defensive player completely out of bounds. And as he made that key block, that really opened the hole for Reginald Work for clear sailing down the sideline and it worked for work 17 yards on the play this is a play that shows you how much confidence they have in their wide receivers generally you don't want to run a pitch toward trips because those receivers aren't going to block anybody and your running back's going to get killed but their receivers come off the ball get manned up and just do a great job of blocking for him to get down the field injured player is down around the 28 yard line we believe that is Antoine Savage Tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, ABC Sports wraps up its college football triple header with the Battle of Old Rivals. Number four, Florida, takes on number three, Florida State, right here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Get post-game analysis online each week. From ABC's Terry Bowden at ESPN.com, keyword BCS. That is going to be a game. Oh, yes. Yes. Antoine took a little knee in the head, and we'll uh, see what the result of that is. Josh Heifel, he's the all-time leader, just became, he needed 70 yards coming into this game to be the all-time leader, and now he has done that. Here's the trail. That's the trail. Goes inside the 10-yard line to the 9. Now, those of you who follow uh, Sooner football know Seth Luttrell wearing number 35. Well, he's not wearing 35 today, as you can see. He's wearing number 42. This is Dad's day. His dad, Jim, played here at Oklahoma. He wore 42. He's wearing that number in his honor. And you know, I the like neat that. thing, it is, it's like very that. neat. And the best part about it is his dad didn't know it until he got to the stadium today that uh, Seth was going to do that. Second down and two. Nothing is there for Quentin Griffin on the inside handoff. No surprise that Quentin Griffin gets the ball down here. He has 15 touchdowns on the year. Only, and all of those scored in the last six games. So once they get down in the red zone, he is the guy that they like to give the ball to. And he has a great job. He does a great job of getting the ball into the end zone. For sure, can Page make the stop. Lots of the yard back to the nine. Third down and three. Key down for the defense. Hypo sets, has pressure, throws. It is incomplete, and the flag is going to drop. Wolfhawk, the intended receiver. Derek Briggs had the coverage. This is the double-edged sword of blitzing. You bring the blitz to try to put the pressure on, but he gets that ball off, and he's either going to get a completion or he's going to throw it in such a way that you've got to commit pass interference to break that thing up. Pass interference. Defense. Defense. Oh. Automatic down. Take a look at the end zone. They got the blitz coming on both sides. He gets that... Uh, they gets the ball up. That didn't look like bad pass interference to me. This might be uncatchable, but wow. Does he get popped? He spot the ball at the two-yard line, spot of the foul. Griffin going for the end zone, and he is stopped at the one-yard line. And remember, that was third down, and if the play would have stood, then Oklahoma would have gone with a field goal attempt. Blue Jets making the last tackle for Texas Tech. Now they've got a fresh set of downs starting at the two-yard line, and now second and one from the one. And you can expect it to be Griffin. He has been such a factor the last six games. Scoring his 15 touchdowns all in the last six games. All rushing, of course. Well, Josh has been a lot of time looking at his wristband there. I bet they're going to come with a pass. Oh, oh. 
Hypo was setting to throw. You were right on the call. But the play was stopped. So now it looks like they'll probably get backed up another five yards. Unless, I guess it could have been on the defense if the defense was too far across the ball. But here again, we'll see if they get backed up. This will be the second time in this game that Oklahoma, in, in a short yardage situation, gets themselves backed up. And now if, if they get backed up five yards, they'll... Illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Second and, second and six instead of second and one. Was Bubba rocking the ball for uh, the call of an illegal snap? He might be. What what happens sometimes is, uh, you know, if he's looking down there, he's about to snap the ball. If you start to move it and then you don't snap it all the way, you get the illegal snap. This is a quick snap. High for fake throw, throw. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Trent Smith, his second touchdown of the year. They describe him as a tight end. They say he's more of a receiver than a tackle. Some tight ends are more tackle than receiver. Trent Smith does a good job of getting open and, and making the play. Really, though, Josh Heifel and the fake that he makes on the inside on this play action really sets this up. Watch the handoff fake there. Everybody is fooled. Josh comes back out, hits his tight end for the touchdown. The extra point attempt by Tim Duncan. And it is right down the middle. So with 5.38 left to go in the first half, the Oklahoma Sooners have taken a 14-3 lead over Texas Tech. We'll be back with the kickoff. 38, time remaining in the first half. Tim Duncan to kick it away for Oklahoma. Sean Williams is the deep back on the return. From the goal line, now out to the 10, 15, and down around the 17-yard line. Well, we're getting set to be on camera. It's nice to say hello to everybody. You know, this, the weather here, we had all kinds of reports. We, we were expecting even snow at one time. It turned out to be a really pretty day. It is a really nice day, and I think that's going to work for both teams. These teams like to pass the ball, and you don't get into a messy, um, cold, and wet day. So it's perfect out here. <laughs> it really is, and we're glad that you could be with us. Let's get back to the ball again. Texas Tech, a first down at their own 18-yard line, trailing 14-3. to three. And the sellout crowd now getting involved in the ball game. Kingsbury a fake. He's going to keep running to the right, but it's a pretty nice play. Has the first down and out of bounds. Texas Tech did something here that you're going to see a lot of today. They put their formation into the boundary. They've got trips into the boundary, and then they motion another guy over there. You can't see it, but all the, everybody's over on the other side of the field. So now Kingsbury can run to the wide side of the field, and Oklahoma has a tough time defending it. We talked to the Oklahoma coaches yesterday, and they were saying that's one of the toughest things that Texas Tech does, putting the formation into the boundary like that. First down at the 33-yard line. Kingsbury not known for being a running quarterback. In fact, his total offensive rushing yards, they take away, of course, when he has dropped for a loss and he's back to pass. His total offensive rushing yards is minus five <laughs> coming into the ballgame. So not expected to be that much of a threat. Two, Derek there is Derek Doris again. Yes. And and I, I like him a lot. You know, watching him play, he runs really good routes. He's got great hands there. He makes a good catch with his hands and gets the ball upfield. And he's hit by Rocky Kalmus, you saw coming out. He's going to be coming from the left side of your screen, just coming across the ball. Kingsbury sees him, hits him, nice catch reaching out, and then just turns it up and gets the, the first down. Rocky Kalmus looks shaken up a little bit on that one. Not quite 45-yard line. First down. Kingsbury has time, throws, pass is complete. And an excellent reception. And that was by Carlos Francis because he knew he was going to be hit immediately, and he was. Carlos Francis set a freshman record last year, 234 yards in a game. That was just in his second career game, uh, actually this year against Utah State. 46-yard line of the Sooners, second down in the yard. Texas Tech continues to move offensively. They just cannot get it across the goal line. But they do pick up the first down here. This is Shad Williams. And he is stopped by Kalmus again, who is the leading tackler, by the way, for Oklahoma on Thanksgiving Friday. ABC Sports has a great college football doubleheader. 
Stacey Hickoff Friday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Colorado faces number 10, Nebraska. Then at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, Texas A&M against Texas. That big matchup all here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. 36-yard line, first down. Spread formation again. Four wide receivers over the middle. Incomplete. Tipped by the intended receiver. He could not pull it down. Carlos Carlos Francis. He was hit immediately. Had no shot at it. Brandon Everidge had the coverage for Oklahoma. And that Boy, was the a, Sooners hit hard. Oh, they do hit hard. And great coverage by Brandon Everidge. He sits back there at the safety. He never got fooled by the crisscross that was happening underneath him. Stayed locked on his man. Comes up and makes the big hit. We get a little bit of pressure. Not too much on Kingsbury. Second down and 10. Fumble and is still loose. Kingsbury pulls it back in. Very costly mistake. Back to the 48-yard line of the Red Raiders. That'll end up being a loss of, oh, around 17 yards on the play. This is the kind of play where, you know, the ball comes out and it's just a bad snap. And then you get torn. Should I pick it up? Should I fall on it? He decides at the last minute to fall on it and misses it. But fortunately, he's able to scoop it back in. Why is that? Why does that happen? Why is it so hard to fall on the ball? Yeah, because the ball's squirting around, and you're, you're really, I've been in that situation where you're trying to decide, should I pick it up, should I fall on it? At the last minute, the second you decide, but it's too late. Now for the shotgun. Pump fake comes back with the running screen on the right side. Pass is complete. And out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Getting about 10 yards back, Shawn Williams on the play. Out of Let's take a look at this again. They put trips over to their, the left-hand side of the field again. So he takes the snap, and he's going to look left and kind of pump to left. They ran a fake screen over there, then to set up the screen on this side, Shot Williams again. No relation to Ricky Williams, but he is the, the quicker and smaller of the two. Fourth down at 15. Great house will kick it away. The return man is J.T. Thatcher. His first chance at a punt since the one that he dropped. Let's see how he handles it. Calls for the fair catch. And circles under it. Accepts it at the nine-yard line. And that's the smart play. He probably should have called for a fair catch on the last one. But, you know, sometimes you get into a big game, or you're trying to make the big play, and you, you extend yourself a little bit too much. 32 yards on the little pooch kick. We have three and a half minutes time remaining in the first half. And Oklahoma has the lead of 14 to three. Mike Leach, the head coach at Texas Tech and their offensive coordinator, he is the offensive genius that um, has done worked so well at Kentucky, at Oklahoma, and now at Texas Tech. And he's the reason you're seeing all these funky formations that Texas Tech is running. Right now his team's down 14 to three, but he's hoping to close the gap. Oklahoma now from their own nine-yard line, first down. They will stay on the ground, trying to have a little working room. This is Quentin Griffin, and he is stopped by Lemon. Out to the 11-yard line, so he's going to pick up a couple on the play. Now, with Quentin Griffin, what they try to do with him, they give him the ball, and they're trying to stay balanced. Last week against Texas A&M, they said that they had 31 plays in the first half, 25 passes, six runs, and they were behind Texas A&M. So they're making a concerted effort this week to run the ball early and continue to run it and stay balanced. Texas Tech has contained Griffin. He has carried the ball six times. He has rushed for a total of only seven yards. Here comes the blitz, and he gets it away incomplete. Whoa! That is a great call by Texas Tech. They overwhelm him with the blitz. Here, and, and watch Heifel. This is what he, Heifel, he just, he back, 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 back. He just keeps drifting back. The pass is pretty good. The problem is, if you look at the, the shadows out there, that ball came right out of the sun. But you get the good rush. Oh. John Norman and nobody saw him. No, well, nobody could pick him up. They, they overloaded that side. There wasn't anybody to block him. Third down. Here comes the blitz again. Again, it's a man oh. free, and it is incomplete. Woo. Almost oh. picked off. He, there he is. You know, Josh drops back. The blitz is coming. He's reacting to it. He just got hit on the last play. Doesn't want to get hit again. Trying to get rid of it. Almost picked off right there on the five or six yard line. John Norman. <laughs> And That's Devin it. Lemon. It's, it's a different blitz, a but it comes through the same place, the same guy getting free, but Josh gets rid of it before the hit comes. And he protects his is Wes Wilker. They're going to have to figure out 
that blitz, you know, it's hard to adjust to a great defensive blitz. Well, put if you got two blockers on that side, they're going to bring three rushers. And so there's not a whole lot you can do offensively unless you're going to say, we're going to put a back back here and keep him back here to block. And I don't know how good a blocker Quentin Griffin is. He's a small guy, might be able to handle it, might not. Ferguson, not a very good kick, but he does get a good roll to the 45-yard line. 44 yards on the kick coming up on the MSN halftime report. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have scores and highlights around the country on this rivalry Saturday. Plus, we'll preview tonight's epic battle between Florida and Florida State. Texas Tech not out of this one by any manner. It means they are down 14 to 3. They've been able to move the ball. They've not been effective inside the red zone. They've really not been effective getting close to the goal line. First down and 10. We credit the Oklahoma defense, probably much more than the Alex Kingsbury. Out of time, scrambles. That's a that's a slide. It's a diving <laughs> slide. <laughs> it's he a wanted diving a slide. He, he wanted <laughs> a slide, <laughs> and his shoulders were out in front of his feet, yeah. and he couldn't make it work. <laughs> you know what you call that? You call that a slumble. <laughs> half slide, half stumble. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good for six yards. That's right. Second down and four. If it works, it works. They'll draw it up and put it in the playbook. <laughs> Look at Texas Tech, overwhelmingly pass-heavy. Oklahoma State. Played pattern down the sideline and almost intercepted. Outstanding defensive coverage. Daryl Jones, the intended receiver, Michael Thompson, had him perfectly. As you watch the replay here, he's going to put this ball up. And, you know, you throw the fade out there. You hope to get a completion. Um, you might get pass interference. Worst case, you're going to get an interception. That ball should have been picked off. Third down and four. Trips on the left side. Oklahoma's defense reacts to the left side, their defensive right. Let's see if they throw this to the right. Now they have too many men over there, looking left, looking left, staying left, coming back right side. And it'll be close. Needed four yards, may have gotten Derek Doris. But that was really set up on the fake and looking left all the way. Doris just kind of ambling out to the right. Kalmus was there. And it looked like on that one, Doris might have been kind of an outlet receiver. But the, the coaches were telling us that's the thing that they worry about. You put it, the, all those receivers over there on the short side, then you got to worry about covering this big field, and they got a lot of room to work with. First down inside the 45 yard line. 144, time remaining in the half. Shotgun. Blitz coming, it's picked up well. On the move. The sliding reception, are they going to call it a catch? The pass is incomplete. They're going to call it incomplete. He's politicking for it, though. Francis, the intended receiver. He's a true freshman. Gets in here. Let's see if he catches this ball. Ooh, that looks like a catch. Well, this, mm. you know, then it hits the ground. Yeah. I don't know. You could call that one either way. They called it the other way. They called it incomplete. I think the officials were caught on it also. It wasn't that quick reaction that you expect. Sure. Shotgun, blitz coming from the outside. Picked up, rolls away from the pressure, into another pressure, downfield, intercepted, but out of bounds, I believe. Let's see. No, nope, they gave they, it to they him. They gave it to him as the interception. I was just about to compliment Kingsbury on the way he reacted to that blitz. I think he might have been trying to throw this ball away. Holloman with the pressure. You watch the pressure that comes inside. He kind of just sits in there. He's relaxed. He's relaxed. He's relaxed. Then he steps off to the right. That's fine. But then this throw, he kind of throws it up there to get picked off. And really a nice play. A nice play by Derek Strait to, to get his foot down and keep and pick this one off. I think he might have been trying to, to throw that one away, but wasn't able to get it all the way out of bounds. Just needs to get that one foot down in college football. He does. 29, 34-yard line, first down. 126 left to go for Oklahoma, first half. Eiffel comes out firing. This one is incomplete. Late flag comes in from 15 yards downfield. Now, I disagree with that. Even if the call is right. You had <laughs> too far away. Are, yeah, you got officials that are much closer. Let them call it. Well, everybody on the defense 
after the play starts looking around saying hey are they going to call they're going to call it this official 15 yards back is digging down deep in his pocket oh that oh, no. i think that's that's a no. bad call no, that is a bad call and from behind i can see why that would look like yeah. interference though but no. from the side or from in front no. no ball was already passed though yeah savage the intended receiver and it was called on ryan acock Here's Quentin Griffin. And Oklahoma in that hurry up offense. 113 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. It'll be second down and eight. And that was a nice catch by Griffin. You see the way all those shadows are angling off uh, kind of at a diagonal to the right. Every ball that comes on that pass is coming right out of the sun. And that, that one he just caught was. Fisher's fumbling with the football, costing Oklahoma a couple of seconds. Hyper rolls. He's going to stop. Comes back, throws it. And a sliding grab at the 50-yard line. No, they're going to say that one is incomplete. Savage, the intended receiver. And the call by the official right on top of the play that it's incomplete. But that's classic hypo. The way he runs around, he runs around, keeps moving. And then wherever he, whatever position he's in, when he decides to throw the ball, he just throws the ball. He doesn't stop and set his feet again. He doesn't try to have good form. He just, he's going to run off to the right here. Okay, he's running to the right. He's running. If you want to throw it now, he would throw it. But he doesn't want to throw it now. Now he stops, comes back this way. If you want to throw it now, you throw it. Uh, now he's ready to throw it. <laughs> is he is truly like a basketball player. Michael Jordan out on the court. He's he's up in the air. He's double pumping and he, and he shoots it whenever he's ready to shoot it. This one is downfield, overthrown, intercepted. On the return, here comes Texas Tech down the sidelines and out of bounds with 38 seconds remaining. Mark Washington with his second interception of the year. His second interception. He's got 107 tackles. He's normally coming up in run support and and tackling receivers and running backs, but this time he's in perfect position. Hypo throws this ball a little bit too short. And he's in perfect position to pick it off. Returns it back, and now it gives his team a chance to put some points on the board before the half. 34 yards on the return. And that's what you get when you try to come after the guy who's got the ball. Tech has one timeout remaining. Every defensive player is just waiting for a chance to hit the quarterback <laughs> when he's trying to make a tackle. The ball of the 33-yard line, first down. 38 seconds left, first down. Right over the middle, incomplete. At the 30-yard line. The Oklahoma brings that six, I think that was a seven-man blitz that they brought. And when you bring that many guys, you can't block them on offense. So it forces you to throw the quick pass. Oklahoma knows, look, we've got 34 seconds left in this half. If we can keep them off balance, don't let them get a pass off then we're going to be okay. Second down and 10. Pressure comes again. Kingsbury rolls out. And he gets to the 26-yard line. Derek straight with the tackle at the 26. Sometimes quarterbacks overreact and they scramble out of the pocket too early. That time Kingsbury underreacted. He kind of sat in there as the court, as the pocket was collapsing on him, and <laughs> but he manages to get out. Burkholz, the field goal kicker, is hit from 50 yards this year, 53 yards in his career. They'll take their last time out with 12 seconds remaining. So they're in field goal range as we step aside. We'll be back in just a moment. 12 seconds remaining in the first half. Three wide receivers left, one right. You got to throw to the end zone. And then you come back with a field goal attempt, and this one is thrown away. Everybody was covered. Time was out. Six seconds now left on the clock, and that'll bring in Chris Burkholz, who is hit from 42 yards away in this game, from 50 yards away this year, and from 53 yards away in his career. I think... He, they, if I had to run that play over again, I might try for a quick pass on the sideline to get a little bit more yards for Chris before he makes this kick. You know, here he, he's going to make a 43-yard attempt. You know, maybe a 37 or a 35-yard attempt would give you a better shot. 43 yards away. And it is bending right, and it is no good from 43 yards 
out. And you're right, Reggie, another six or seven yards could well have made a difference. It certainly could. And, you know, you, you have just 12 seconds to go before that last play. You can try for the end zone, or you can try to just run a route on the sideline and say, hey, we're going to get another five, six, ten yards and, and give ourselves a better shot. As it is, 43 yards, a little bit too long. And, and I think looking at the numbers of both these kickers coming in, they're coming into this game, they were both 10 of 16 on the year. And inside 30 yards, they're pretty good. Outside 30 yards, it becomes very suspect. Well, it's easier to be good inside of 30 yards, isn't it? <laughs> Not for you and me. <laughs> so that brings the first half to a close. The offense is very similar. The defenses really know these offenses. They both had the same offensive coordinator. All right, it is halftime. It is Oklahoma, the number one team in the country, out in front, 14 to 3. In Oklahoma, this is Charlie Jones and Reggie Rivers as we get set for the second half with Oklahoma out in front of Texas Tech by a score of 14-3. Let's look at the highlights of the first half. On the first half, it started out. Kingsbury's pass is tipped. J.T. Thatcher, the hero, picks it off, takes it 85 yards for a touchdown. Josh Heifel comes back, hits Trent Smith for a touchdown. It's 14-3, but then, then we get the fumble. J.T. Thatcher is back, this time cast as the GOAT. And finally, we've got Mark Washington makes the pick right before the half, but they cannot convert on the field goal. It is 14-3, Oklahoma. So we get set for the second half. There's Kingsburg at Texas Tech. First half, he completed 23 of 36 passes. Threw the ball 36 times in the first half. 163 yards, two interceptions. 36 times in one half. Yeah. Sick, kid. Sick. <laughs> that's a lot of passes. They, and they rushed 12 times. Hey, well, and that's, that's about right. They, it's about a three or four to one average, what they normally do. And here is the kick. Antoine Savage on the return. Savage to the 10, the 15. And we'll be down to around the 18, possibly the 19 yard line. Now let's take a look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. First half stats following that 18 yard return. The plays Texas Tech 49 yards, Oklahoma 27 yards. Or 49 plays. 49 plays, but look down at the total yards, almost the same. It's, it's remarkable that they can be the same having that much disparity in their plays. Texas Tech averaging about three and a half yards per play. Oklahoma 7.1 yards per play. So much more efficient with their plays. <laughs> Oklahoma to spot it just shy of the 20-yard line and it's first down as the Sooners going for the berth, going for the championship of the South in the Big 12 and that playoff game on December the 2nd in Kansas City as Kansas State winning today. They are already there. Quentin Griffin is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10 to Zurich and McCoy on the tackle. Griffin now seven carries for eight yards rushing on the ball. Wow. And on that one, I think he gained just about his height. One yard. Okay, he's taller than you. What's he getting? Eiffel, right flat, pass is complete. This is Griffin, and he's out of bounds. That time, he's been more effective as a receiver than as a rusher, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has. They, they get the ball to him quick. He's really fast and, and strong. He can run the ball well. I think he runs a 4-3-40. By that time, they put trips out to the right-hand side of the field, kind of moved everybody across the, the ball and threw the little swing pass to Quentin Griffin. Wasn't cleared out completely, but he did gain about four or five yards. He has, he has four receptions for 27 yards. Third down and five from the shotgun. And the long shadows in the setting sun. High pull to throw. Has plenty of time. Now he's past the line of scrimmage. He's committed. As he goes for the first down, let's see where they mark him out of bounds. Lemons takes him out along the far sideline. Josh Heupel's style of throw makes him a good scrambling quarterback because he can throw from virtually any position. As he starts to move to his right, everybody's covered, everybody's covered. So when he starts to run, he's still got the ball caught. The defense is running around still thinking he might throw that ball. And so you see that game after game after game where guys are dropping off into coverage rather than coming up to tackle him. And it's because of that unorthodox ability to just throw it from any position. Officially, that's his first rush in the ball game today. 30-yard line, he does pick up the first down. Three receivers on the near side, one on the far side. 
Comes out firing to the near side to Savage. Savage will go to around the 38-yard line. Aaron Hunt makes the tackle. That's the exact same play that we've seen Texas Tech run quite a few times a day. And we have to remember that both of these offenses are pretty much the same. Head coach Mike Leach at Texas Tech was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma last year who installed this offense. And so both of these teams have had a chance during practice this week to work against an offense they're very familiar with defensively. And I think that shows up in this being a close game at 14 to 3. Second down and two. Here's the pitch. And the first down. Ronaldo Works picks it up. Now you can say what you want about Texas Tech, and they've, they've had trouble against ranked opponents. They are the only team in Division I to have three shutouts this year, so defensively they can play a little bit of football. They also had a, another game. I think it was North Texas. North Texas scored seven points, but it was on an interception return. So this defense technically has four shutouts. And because they're playing against this Oklahoma offense, an offense they're very familiar with, I think they're showing that they kind of know how to contain this Oklahoma attack. Everyone, I think everyone who's watching this would have expected Oklahoma to have more than 14 points by now. They have played well. They've had some uh, offensive opportunities. They've not been able to cash in, though. The Oklahoma defense has really been tough inside the red zone or down at least inside the 30-yard line. They have, they have really slowed the Red Raiders down there. Here's Clinton Griffin on the receiving end again. And he is out near the 50-yard line. The Red Raiders have gotten into Oklahoma territory seven times, but have converted only one field goal. Now we see Quentin Griffin again getting the call. And again, he's more effective when they throw him the little dump pass, and he gets up the field, makes one guy miss, and turns it into a nice little game. When he can get out in space, he can really maneuver, can he? He really can. He's quick and he's fast. You know, he, a lot of schools didn't want to take a chance on him because he's kind of a small back. But Oklahoma, they brought him in, and with this style of offense, I think it's perfect for a back of his type. You don't necessarily need the big bruiser who's going to sit back there and run people over. Griffin is from uh, Houston. In fact, Oklahoma has kids from 11 different states. Texas Tech, on the other hand, has 71 on their roster, 71 kids, and only six are from a state other than Texas. Well, Texas is a big state. That's true. Got a lot to work with. And a lot of great <laughs> high school football in the state, too. I'm from Texas. That's right, you are. I yes. forgot that you're in San Antonio. So don't malign Texas. <laughs> oh, and I love the high school. The Texas high school program is just awesome. Oh, good position by Andre Wolfhook to recover that ball. Trent Smith on the receiving end. Wolfhook with the recovery. You, you watch this. The ball is completed here and then just knocked out right there. But Wolfhook hustling. And that's a little thing. As coaches will tell you, little things make the difference. Once a guy catches the ball, everybody else needs to be hustling toward him. And when, the, when you're doing that routinely, play after play after play, you're hustling in that direction, nothing happens, then boom, a ball hits the ground, you're in position to fall on it. McClendon stripped him of the football, and this half Heifel, four of four for 26 yards. That time very well played by the... Texas Tech and defense. Tom Savage with the ball. And another thing, just to add to Heifel's height, is that he's a very good fake yes. in the backfield with the, you know, with the crossing back, and he handles the ball well. He he's handles the ball kid. extremely well. I mean, he's he. You watch him back there. He's just so casual. Such this kind of casual grace about him as he moves around. He never seems to get too perturbed about anything. The whole Heisman hype. He's not really into it. You ask him a question about, it, he's like, hey, it's about the team, kid. Yeah. We had a, yeah, he's low-key. Yeah, very low-key. Yeah, we talked to him yesterday. He's a nice chap. Pressure is coming, and he has to get rid of it. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. You know, Heifel does a lot of things. You know, his his body positioning, probably as right NFL scouts pressure. look at him, they might not be. They say, oh, well, we're going to get him in, and we're going to change him. We're going to get his fundamentals down. But they've been working on his fundamentals here at Oklahoma, and he's gotten better and better. Used to have some elbow problems last year because of the way that the way that he was throwing um, the ball, but it really made some improvements. We look at the uh, defense coordinator for Texas Tech there, Greg McMacken, came here from Hawaii last year. And he is well traveled. <laughs> He's been in a lot of plays. Sets and fires, and it is incomplete. That was the tenth play of this drive, and this is the opening drive of the second half of the ball game. Damian Mackey. And no, it was Antoine Savage, the intended receiver, and it was Lawrence Flugens who was putting the pressure on right 
there. This time they get good pressure, and you have to pick your moments to blitz. You can't blitz every play because Heifel will eat you alive. But when you keep them off balance, sometimes you're dropping in the zone. Sometimes you're bringing the, the blitz. So then he doesn't always know when it's coming. He gets hurried, and you get an incomplete pass. Jeff Ferguson will kick it away. Wes Welker is the return man. Good protection. And it's going to go out at the one-yard line. Wow. That's the old coffin corner. Do you remember it? 40-yard kick. We'll step aside with a timeout. And the youngest Oklahoma cheerleaders. <laughs> and they're ready to fight for that number one spot. <laughs> a little pumpkin. Tech from their own one-yard line. And stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost half a yard. That was Sean William. And you're just half a step away from a safety. Roy Williams for the defense. Oklahoma is still number one, and Texas Tech is still at the one, but barely. Nice play, getting penetration and getting the hit. A good job by Williams just get that thing out of the end zone. I think they should throw a pass here. Kingsbury fakes, pressure's coming. Steps away, throws, and it's incomplete. Outside pressure with a blitz. Whoa. That was close. I think I thought they should have thrown a pass, but I was thinking more three-step drop. Just yeah. drop back and get the ball gone. He's sitting back there. They had a blitz coming from the top of the screen, and luckily the running back did a good job of picking up that blitz. That was Kingsbury's fifth straight incomplete pass. Third down. Now you need to at least get some room for your punter if he's going to have to come in. Caught at the one-yard line. Nice fake out to the five. Gives your kicker some room. Yes. So it's not the first down, but at least your punter can be at a normal kicking depth. You don't have to worry about him feeling pressured, and he can still get a kick away. They're probably not going to rush the punt. They're going to get good field position anyway. Shad Williams on the reception. Derek straight with the tackle. He can set up the return. And guess what? J.T. Thatcher. J.T. He has an 85-yard interception for the first score of the ball game. And then he had a muff punt that didn't get converted into points, fortunately for him. But now he has a chance to make another big play. Clinton Greathouse kicks it away. Pretty good kick. J.T. backs up, takes it at the 43. Drops, reverses his field. Nice play. And then he runs out of room. White jerseys were waiting for him at that point. The words you hear in descriptions of JT are enigma. That, that they sometimes have a hard time figuring out which player he's going to be. The good one? This week's Affleck trivia question. Josh Heifel has passed for 400 yards twice this season. Who is the only other Big 12 quarterback to do that? We'll have the answer for you in a few minutes. No, you continue with your thought. Well, that JT, sometimes he was undisciplined in some of the decisions he was making in the running game and the passing game. And so he's been the starter. He's been benched. He's made some interceptions. He's a big play guy. So they just need for him to make some good decisions out there. I put a little shovel pass again to, to Griffin out to the 50-yard line. That's a gain of a yard on the play, and that's it. Well, let's take a look at Josh today. Josh, Josh Heifel's day has been a mixed bag. He has a couple of precision passes, getting it in, making some big plays. But he's also had some, you know, bangs and bruises he's taken and some, some missed opportunities. And now spot the ball at the 50-yard line. Heifel in the Oklahoma City. Out in front, 14-3 with just under nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. He's up under center. Safety's back off the play. It'll be interesting to see how the officials call this one yeah. because Josh walked away from the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That drew the defender off, off the ball. Now, technically, the quarterback's just in motion. He's allowed to move backward. Unless he makes that motion attempting to, uh, right. to pull the defense offside. The Shurik went with him when he stepped back. I think, I think that's going to go against Oklahoma. Because you really, it, it's either it has to go against the offense or you don't call either side. You can pick up the flag. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. 
but once it's out of your pocket as an official, just as a matter of professional pride, you want to call it against somebody. <laughs> The Oklahoma faithful don't like it, but let's take a look at it again. He's under center, and he's going to decide he wants to go into shotgun. So he first he screams, no. and then he steps yes. out. Yes, but also he jumped with his shoulders right. in his arm before so he stepped while back. While he's doing the yeah. cadence, yeah. he's he's jumping, yeah. and then when he steps out from from the lineman standpoint, hey, he's, he's got the ball and he's, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. You're right. And a good call by the official. Texas Tech showing blitz, great protection. Pass underneath the coverage is complete. It's to Matt Anderson. That is Anderson's third reception of the year, and it's good for 16 yards. Matt Anderson, he's a senior, 6'2", 252 pounds. He looks to be about a biscuit shy of 275, really. But great protection. And look, he looks like a big defensive lineman running down the field. He hooks up in the zone. Look at those ugly shoes. He breaks the tackle. <laughs> In the middle of it, you're commenting on his attire. <laughs> but look at you him. He looks like a defensive ugly. lineman, and then he just runs over people. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Wolfhawk out the reverse. As great speed, they finally run him out of bounds. Good play. And what a block by Josh Heifel to get him beyond the line of scrimmage. Josh got crushed, but he makes a good block. 11 yards on the play. Washington takes him out of bounds. Let's look again. Take a look at this. On the reverse, gets handed off, gets pitched back, and then watch Josh Heifel take boom right there. Oh, my God. He took out Pitts. You don't want the franchise doing that too often. 28-yard line, first down. You tell him if you're going to block somebody, don't block one of the linebackers. Pick out a DB. A cornerback, for sure. <laughs> a cameraman on the sideline. Downfield open. Oh. Oh, they're going to call it incomplete. Ronaldo works the intended receiver. Man, there oh, is that, boy, that that's seven points staring you in the face. He is a true freshman in the game, and there is that accuracy of high ball. I mean, watch this ball is just he sees it, bam, it's gone, and he hits him. And that's a little bit behind, I guess. You know, having to turn around threw him off, but definitely a catchable ball. Second down and ten. The ball at the 28-yard line. 8.22 left in the third. I think he's gripping back with him. Go ahead. This is tech, man. I think mean, you bring some pressure on second and ten, I think. You want to create a third and one. Oh, yeah. They're showing blitz, and here it comes. Huh? And he's going to kiss off the far side to Josh Palmer. You know, we yeah. talked to the coaches, both sets of coaches, about that. Why don't you blitz more? They're going to throw more. That's why yes. Eiffel will pick you apart. 22 yards on the play. Lemons makes the tackle. Both coaches said that blitzing is feast or famine. So they come. It wasn't, you know, they, they had a screen on, but they get the ball outside, and they got great blocking down the field. Man, those wide receivers do a great job of blocking. But you put some pressure on Heifel, he responds beautifully. Ball just inside the six-yard line. He pushed down and goal to go. Here's work to the corner. He's got it. That is works, and again, he's a true freshman. He gets to, to come back from that drop pass he had just a little while ago. I'm sure he feels bad about that, but now he gets to carry it into the end zone. He's a true freshman. They say, you know, they're working with him. He tends to run a little bit too east and west sometimes, but he shows a lot of potential for being a good back for Oklahoma. And we have that as his first touchdown of the year, so his first touchdown for Oklahoma. And the extra point is good. So the Sooners have stretched their lead with 7.56 to go in the third. They're out in front 21 to 3. As we come back, let me make a correction for Ronaldo Works in case you follow Sooner football. That is his fifth touchdown of the season. John Williams is the deep back on the return, and it will go into the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it all out to the 20-yard line. That 
ball died like a golf shot. Boy, it did. It did. Earlier, we asked you on our Affleck trivia question, be besides Josh Heifel, who is the only other Big 12 quarterback to pass for 400 yards twice this season? In one, in season. one season. In one season. Not this season. One season. Okay. Boy, yeah. that man. Ty's little brother. Yeah. Colorado. Boulder. Yes. Close to where you live in Denver. I do, right up the road. From the 20 yard line. Gain of four yards in the play. That's Welkin. Moves inside, catches it, moves forward, and is stopped by Roy Williams. And Oklahoma is figuring out how to defend that play. The Texas Tech has run that thing probably six or seven times, that exact play. Williams does a great job of coming up and making the tackle. Griff Kingsbury, the quarterback, he's really, he said he'd put the ball in the air today, and he really has. The coaches of Oklahoma said he is one of the toughest competitors that they have ever seen. He says he'll take a beating, and he just comes right back. Said they have a lot of admiration for him. He gets his pass off, but it is incomplete. Ricky Williams, the intended receiver. And credit that to the Oklahoma rush. You, know, you got guys coming in there putting a little pressure on him. I think he felt like he had to throw it over them to get it to the receiver. It goes a little bit high. Third down and seven at the 23-yard line. And speaking of Kingsbury's toughness, you watch some of those games. He gets smacked around, but he just gets right back up, keeps coming at you. Key play in the ball game for Texas Tech. They really need a first down. They need to keep their offense on the field for a while. He throws into a crowd. The pass is going to be ruled complete, but it'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Derek Doris is the receiver. Now, they've gambled on fourth down and one several times in the ball game. Roy Williams and Torrance Marshall were there for Oklahoma. Do they try it one more time? Yeah. I don't know if I would gamble right here. You got 6-10 to go in the third. Huh? It looks like he is calling a play. They're calling a play. And they have to make it. They have to make the first down. Nope, they trying to pull the Sooners offside. They call the timeout. You know, and Oklahoma's defense, boy, they sit there. You can't fake them. You can't fake them. No. All right, with the timeout, we'll step aside. We'll be back in a moment. Yeah. As we come back, they are going to go for it. Kingsbury with the quarterback sneak and a pile up. The officials coming in right on the 30 yard line. And the football just needs to touch the chalk of the 30. They've got the first down. And they have the first down. A gutsy call. Does that formation look, does that formation look any better to you? No, it didn't. <laughs> you know, they keep coming up to the line of scrimmage on fourth in improbable situations, fourth and short. And then they try to draw them off size. I, but this time, they just say, hey, we're going to line up, run the quarterback sneak. You know we're going to run the sneak because we're not lined up to do anything else. That Oklahoma defense so well disciplined. Yes. Goes quickly to the right flat. Carlos Francis, he's got about three yards. Oklahoma's rush defense, their season average against the rush is about 108 yards. Today, Texas Tech has rushed for only 16 yards. Woo. We said at the beginning that Texas Tech would throw the ball a lot, and that is no lie. They do not <laughs> hand it off. I mean, they've had a handful of running plays all day today. Pass over the middle. Monday night, it's a must-win situation for Washington. They face St. Louis on Monday night football. Live at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ABC. And then Sunday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, the Jaguars face the Steelers. The Steelers and the aluminum curtain. Hey, you know what I keep waiting for? Uh, Washington to really blow up all that money they spent on free agency. They think they're going to turn into something. Good protection, then sack. Ran out of time. Corey Callens got him. 
Now it will be fourth down and eight. They'll have to kick it away. And that's just Kingsbury. You've got to make a decision. You know, you, you get the ball, you're back there, your timer, you're like an egg back there on a timer. Ding, your timer goes off. That ball's got to be gone, or you've got to be moving out of the pocket. The offensive line can only hold up for so long. Clinton Greyhounds will kick it away. J.T. Thatcher is the return man. Bad snap, gets a good kick away. Oh, this is the best kick of the day. Thatcher back to the 10-yard line, to the 15, now the 20, has an opening to the 30, avoids a tackle to the 40, has blockers, makes a good move, comes to the right, ball is loose. The ball comes loose in a scramble for it. And that was going to be bad news no matter what happened. There was a flag on the other side of the field for presumably a holding, and Thatcher just gets nudged, his arm gets nudged, and that ball comes tumbling out. He's standing there praying right now that one of his guys is on top of it. Flag back at the 34-yard line. Oklahoma does have the ball. They retain possession. Now you got to sort out the flag. You sort out the flag. That's one of those situations where he's making a big play, and he's in the middle of a big play. You tend to react, relax. You get down the field, and you're thinking, all right, no matter what happens after this point, I've already done a good job. If I get tackled by this next guy, well, that's okay. I've already done a good job. And your body relaxes a little bit, and then you get somebody just kind of hit you from the back. First, he makes a great over-the-shoulder catch to, to start this thing off. Then when he spots the hole, the acceleration. He gets through, makes the guy miss, and now he's just making good moves, making people miss. I don't know if he was switching the ball over. Oh, yep, there it is. A, a hand came through. From behind, you get the ball way down the field. Somebody comes up from behind and just catches you unawares. You're a little bit too relaxed. Ryan Acock stripped him, and Brandon Everidge uh, recovered it for Oklahoma. It was a 57-yard return, 57-yard kick, 23 yards on the return. Of course, that'll be a race. Thatcher and Everidge are both free safety, so there Everidge is covering his buddies behind. <laughs> What a great punt, though, 57 yards. That's the good news. The bad news is you outkick your coverage. Yes. So that means the return man has a full head of steam. So now we've got to see. They can't decide where they want to put the ball. They mark it at the 19-yard line. This is worse than the Florida elections. Eh? Come on, <laughs> officials, figure it's it out. It's a 15-yard penalty. <laughs> Well, they got to recount the yardage. Three minutes, 18 seconds. Time remaining in the third quarter. Eiffel pass is complete to go for And another flag is there. That is either a holding or a face mask. Holding on the offense or a face mask on the tackle. J.T. Thatcher has had it is a face mask and it is against Texas Tech. Thatcher's had an up and down day and right speaking of that we're going to up and down our way to New York City. <laughs> John. It's the Burger King update. Oregon, Oregon State. Ken Simonton 20 yards on this touchdown run. They missed the point after but lead 23 to 7. Remember if Oregon won this game they'd be headed to the Rose Bowl. Oregon State well they need some help but they're up right now. Charlie. This is a great day of college football, isn't it? It is. Fantastic things happen. And with that penalty against Texas Tech, the ball will go out to the 34-yard line. You see, the, the bad, I think what he's arguing about here is that they called that the 15-yard variety of the face mask rather than the five-yard variety. He, you know, the tackle, the, the defender comes over, he's making the tackle. It's not an egregious face mask. Let's try to read his lips. It was on ball, on the fumble. I couldn't say the other word. <laughs> and, you know, and this is this is part of a head coach's job, politicking the officials. The officials are human, and you get into a game if an official feels like he's made a mistake and he's a conscientious man. Now having someone yell at him and scream at him, who's so upset about this mistake, there is a tendency, I think, for officials to want to make it up. Whether they actually do or not, they want to make it up. Texas Tech has taken a timeout. College football on ABC Sports. 
is brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee with legendary off-road capacity. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. And by Burger King. Got the urge. Three minutes and 12 seconds. That is the time remaining here at Owen Field Memorial Stadium, Norman, Oklahoma, with the number one team in the country, the undefeated Oklahoma Sooners, out in front of Texas Tech by a score of 21 to three. The wonderful world of Disney gets the holidays off to a hilarious start. Leslie Nielsen stars in Santa Who. That's tomorrow at seven, six central here on ABC. Jingle bells. One horse open sleigh, over the hills we Wait, go. Not even I pull all the way. Hey, hey, hey. Hold it, we're not to Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> all right, first oh. down for Oklahoma. The ball on their own 34-yard line. And out to Griffin. Griffin runs for the first down. He'll pick up about 15 yards on the play, is exactly 15, and Aaron Hunt makes the tackle. If you've ever played football on any level, you've done those zigzag drills where a coach sets up cones on the field and you run a zigzag. That is exactly what Quentin Griffin looked like on this run. He just kind of zigzag, stayed on a track, zigzagging up for 15 yards. A great run. First down, Sooners. If it works once, let's work it again. Why not? We have two minutes and 43 seconds, time remaining third quarter. The Oklahoma Sooners out in front of the Red Raiders, 21 to 3. I'm Charlie Jones along with Reggie Rivers on an afternoon. The weather was supposed to be possibly cold, maybe some snow. It's been a cool and very pleasant afternoon, very little wind, and a perfect day for football this time of the year. I appreciate you dialing that in. Actually, Josh Heupel's mother probably dialed it in as she was driving 13 hours to get here from Aberdeen, South Dakota, saying, I don't want to drive in the ice. <laughs> and what, what was he told us about the, about the car and how many miles she's put on 67,000 miles or something like that in the course of a year. She comes down from Aberdeen, South Dakota for every game. In fact, this week, she's down here today, and then she's going to come back down on Thanksgiving <laughs> to visit Josh and his sister. Both go to school here. That's a mother's love. That's right. That's a long drive. Yeah. Second down and four, and now the running game is working. Wow. What a move. Quentin Griffin again, and again it's 15 yards. Washington and Hunt on the tackle. Griffin put some move on at the end of that run to give himself another five yards. I mean, it's just, he's, he's so quick and so, and not just fast. I mean, I think his 40 time is fast, but he's quick. Be able, those quick little moves from two and three yards, and he's running down the field. He makes a little jab to the outside. The cornerback runs outside, and he's up the field for another five yards. In the first half, six carries for seven yards. In the second half, four carries for 36 yards. Ronaldo works. Work and work. Oh, those balls never seem to stop coming. Ronaldo's a good looking running back. You know, to be a true freshman coming here and perform the way that he has this year, I think he's really going to turn into a player. And number 38, that's John Norman of the Norman family with the two brothers for Texas Tech and the uh, third brother. Josh is a wide receiver for Oklahoma. Their family is here with mixed emotion, cheering for both teams. <laughs> Got to cheer for both. I was in trouble. Flag is down, works his way out. And he caught around the 37 yard line by Chris Kasuri. He was handled by Chris Kasuri. And there's a flag on the play. Time now for our Marriott moment. This is last year, and Mike Leach there, he was the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. Kingsbury spun out of a sack. He found Morris open behind the Sooner defense. And time running out, a pass to Tim Baker, who made a diving grab. Head coach Spike Dyke's final game 
and he went out a winner as Tech defeated Oklahoma 38 to 28. So now Mike Leach is at the helm over from Oklahoma where he was the offensive coordinator last year. Now the head coach at Texas Tech trying to pull off that same upset. From the shotgun downfield, and it is intercepted. The Red Raiders have the ball as Texas Tech Paul McClendon has the interception. And credit that to the pressure. Josh Heupel is talking to his wide receiver, jabbing his arm as though the receiver ran the wrong way. But Josh gets hammered right as he's releasing this ball, and it goes right into the hands of McClendon. Good job of McClendon being in the right spot at the right time. So Texas Tech will take over at the 47-yard line of Oklahoma. Josh 25 gets, seconds left. Third quarter. He had hit there. It's hard to even tell who he was throwing to. I saw him after the play, after he got up. You see the pressure coming from the left-hand side of the screen. At, right as he releases his ball, he gets hit. After he gets up, he's motioning to somebody that they went the wrong way, but we're not sure who he was throwing to. That was Bluegins that got him. Incomplete. Now, Kingsbury did something there. You know, he's he's a sophomore. He's a, a very talented player. He's got a good arm. He's got good feet. He's got pretty good decision-making, but that was a bad decision. You've got the shuffle pass called, but if you see that your guy is enveloped by a defensive lineman, don't throw the ball out there where something bad can happen. You either hang on to it yourself, you try to throw it to somewhere else, or you throw it away. Second and ten. Play is stopped for the official. Flag is dropped. Illegal motion by one of the receivers. Against Texas Tech. This, by the way, the eighth time that they have been in Oklahoma Territory. And they will be out now of Oklahoma Territory. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, ABC Sports wraps up its college football triple header to the battle of old rivals. Number four, Florida, takes on number three, Florida State, right here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Get post-game analysis online each week from ABC's Terry Bowden at ESPN.com, keyword BCS. Pass to the far side is complete. That is Doris. Been a nice spin move to the outside as soon as he made the reception, and he picks up around six or seven yards on the play. When you watch Doris play, you know, there's nothing too flashy about the guy. He just, he gets off the ball, he's got good strength, he runs good routes, and he gets open, catches the ball. And we come to the end of the third quarter with the score, Oklahoma 21, Texas Tech 3, back to the fourth period in a moment. This is Charlie Jones, Reggie Rivers. We start the fourth quarter. Oklahoma 21, Texas Tech 3. Tech with the ball at the 41-yard line. Little play-action fake. Darrell Jones diving for it. Cannot come up with it. So it'll be fourth down with five to go. They haven't. They've gone for yeah. virtually every fourth down. Haven't they've backed been, off of any of them, have they? <laughs> they've punted a couple of times, but here at this stage in the game, starting in the fourth quarter, I'd imagine they're going to go for this as well, and they are. This is the fifth time that they have gone for the first down on fourth down. Pass is caught. They have the first down. And it is Tim Baker that pulls it in. It was fourth down and five. And he picks up 15 yards on the play. Tim Baker is the big play guy. He's the leading receiver in the Big 12. And we haven't seen a whole lot of him today. He had a couple of passes early. But watch him. He just beats his man off the ball. And it, it then it's zone. So I don't know if his man was supposed to stay with him in man or whether he was expecting the safety to come up and help him out. But Tim Baker falls into that hole and makes the catch. Is there anything on the ground? No, there's nothing on the ground. This is Foy Mullen. He is a, a true freshman and his first carry of the ball game. 
Boy Mullen. Now this is an important drive for Texas Tech. Look at what they've done. They punted, they had an interception, they had a missed field goal, a punt, and then another punt. These are their last five drives. They need to get some points here, preferably a touchdown, but any points would do. Three wide receivers to the right. Chase down in the pocket. Going on the run. Nice play by the receiver. And that is Carlos Francis. When he saw his quarterback in trouble, he came right back to him along the far side. Number one and number two, he stopped, still passed the marker for the first down. Kingsbury does a good job of avoiding the blitz here. And then, as you say, he catches this freshman sitting on the sideline. He does a good job of knowing that he's open and just not moving anymore. Sometimes when you're a young player, you don't realize that you're open. You keep moving around and cover yourself. First down at the 15-yard line. Three wide receivers to the left. Right along the sideline. It is incomplete. Are they signaling out of bounds? No, they... I think they... Yeah. That's the spot. No, that's the spot. That the, out the, spot. Bounds, it's the out of bounds signal it is Derek Doris. I think Doris did a great job of getting both feet down after he made that catch. And if, if he hadn't, I think the officials would have ruled that he was pushed out anyway. Seventh reception for 59 yards. But both toes yeah. come down. He would have been good in the NFL. The ball on the four-yard line. First down goal to go for the Red Raiders. Pass is complete to Carlos Francis, and he was wrapped up by Thatcher immediately. That's the kind of play that if you're a Texas Tech coach sitting on the sideline, your heart just went up into your throat. Francis bobbles this ball, and it, he bobbles it up. And once that ball gets bobbled up, you start thinking, <gasps> somebody on the other team is about to snatch that thing, but he hangs on. So now spot the ball at the five-yard line, and it's second down and five. Quick huddle. When I was playing, I always like if we have second and five, let's score on second down. Because third and five, third and four from the from the four or five is a tough situation to be in. Rolling right, waiting, throwing, and missing. And had a man open. And that was Dora. So now you're stuck with third and goal at the five. And the, the tough part is defensively, it's a very short field to defend. So they can drop a lot of guys back in zone coverage. So your receiver has nowhere else to go. If your quarterback decides to run it, all those guys who are dropped back in coverage are still close enough to come up and make the tackle before you get to the goal line. I think th third and short from inside the five is the toughest down and distance on the field. Corey Callens of Oklahoma was applying the pressure on the last play. Third down, goal to go. Five-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Kingsbury, he has to get rid of it. Locks it on the fade into the end zone, and the flag oh. is down. And the covering flag is there. Darrell Jones, the intended receiver. Both officials called in, so now you got a fresh set of downs at, I don't know, did they spot it at the one-yard line or the two-yard line? I think the one. That's the way to see. Pass interference call, as you see, against Oklahoma. It'll be first down. I think they spot this ball at the two-yard line. Oh, they do. You're right. And so he gets pressured, and he does a good job of just laying the ball up there, knowing a completion is great, interference is great. Either one is going to be good. In this case, he gets the interference call. They got a fresh set of downs, first and goal at the two. Michael Thompson call for the interference, two-yard line. Try it on the ground, you're going to lose the yard. Ricky Williams, absolutely nothing there. This Oklahoma defense has been outstanding in this ball game. The defense is great. They don't get enough credit with all the, the yes. hype about Hypo. People forget that this is a very good Sooners defense. And, you know, they're two guys. We haven't talked about them a whole lot today, but Rocky Calamus and Torrance Marshall, those are the two studs on that defense. They make a lot of plays, and they're the leaders. You mentioned Calamus. He has 11 tackles in the game. Whoa. And Roy Williams has 10. Second down, goal to go. 
Play action fake. There's the other Kingsbury dive to about the one. Yeah. It will be third down and goal to go. Now they have got it. Corey Heineke. They've got the same problem that they just had a few minutes ago. Now you got third and goal from about the one and a half yard line, and it's it's just tough. You don't have a, a running play that you can really call here. They try they go with a fake run. I don't know why they even fake that. No one's going to bite on it. And he tries to get it in the end zone himself, but Oklahoma does a good job of defending it. I think here you need some kind of just quick three-step drop, get the ball gone to somebody, tell somebody to make a quick move and get open. Timeout. Looked as if they were setting up to have a fade in both corners so he could take a look and see who was open and then go to him yeah. immediately. All right. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Oklahoma leads 21 to 3. Texas Tech, their last timeout. By the way, Tech's low rushing games this year against Nebraska 12 rushes, 19 yards. Texas, 14 rushes, 17 yards. Today, 18 rushes. Only 17 yards. They'll lose a yard. Absolutely nothing there. Richardson plug the hole. It has been the story of the day that Texas Tech can move the ball down the field. Once they get it close, they cannot put it in the end zone. This Sooner defense is just too stout for them, and they have no running game. None at all. They, If they need to get one or two yards, they have no one to give it to and, and no scheme to block their way in. Chris Burkholz. 20-yard field goal, 19 yards officially. And he has got it from 19 yards away. That makes it 21 to 6. We'll be back to the kickoff in a moment. The Oklahoma Sooners are 10 minutes and 55 seconds away from winning the Big 12 Southern Championship. They anticipate an onside kick here. And that would put them in the champion, Big 12 championship game, December the 2nd in Kansas City against Kansas State on December the 2nd to be seen here on ABC and the onside kick. I'd kick it away. Why, I mean, you got all those guys lined up there close. Yeah, kick nobody it deep. deep. Nobody, you know, you're, they're not going to get a good return out of it. Another well, one-yard line out to the 10, 15, and a long flag comes floating in. That's J.T. Thatcher on the return. And we'll sort out the play. It's usually holding when the ref throws it from back there. They will sort it out. Probably Oklahoma is going to start a little bit farther back. There it is. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Budweiser, when with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find at no other beer. By Discover Card, there's always something more to discover. And by Quest, the communications to change everything. Texas Tech could use some communications to change everything. They go for fourth at, on fourth down at their own 30, but not at the opposing one. Eiffel scramble, steps forward, and he underscores way in it. He's just throwing the ball. He figured he was out of time. Everybody was covered. Let's uh, cut our losses and move on. Smart decision. And what makes him attractive as a, a quarterback? You know, some team is going to take a chance on him in the NFL. You know, maybe they don't like his fundamentals, or maybe they wonder about his arm strength. But I tell you what, Josh Heupel makes good decisions. He completes, I think, so far in this game, he's completed about 61% of his passes for the season, 67%. You can live with that. A guy who's going to be very accurate and not throw too many picks, you can play with. Hunt and Kusurik with the pressure on the last play for the Red Raiders. Now the Sooners to the ground. It's Clinton Griffin. Kusurik with the tackle. You figure now Oklahoma to 
test their running game. They want to work the clock a little bit. Let's uh, keep things moving right along. Texas Tech is out of timeouts. Uh, the Sooners are leading 21 to 6. They have everything well in hand. Their defense has been truly exceptional in the ball game. Their defense really has, and their running game, they don't really have the kind of running game that you can say, hey, like a Nebraska does. Hey, we're ahead now. We're just going to keep running the ball because that's what we do. They don't have that kind of running game, but they're very balanced, and Quentin Griffin is a good enough back. They should be able to move the ball down the field. Up with a throw. <laughs> that could be dangerous. Aaron Hunt got his hand on it. There again, those defensive linemen, most, most of the time when they're rushing, they come in, they get their hands up, and nothing happens. But every once in a while, you get lucky. You get your hand up in the passing lane, and it finds something. What that offensive lineman has to do, though, is the minute he goes up in the air, you got to push him down, make him fall down awkwardly, because that's the quickest way to get defensive linemen to quit jumping up in the air. Jeff Ferguson kicking from his own end zone. They've, they've had three kicks blocked this year. They've changed their, their blocking assignment. They've changed their personnel on their kicking team. And it looks like Texas Tech is coming after this one. They're overloaded on the right-hand side of your screen. Gets it away, a low kick. Taken on the 46-yard line by Welker. He takes a bit of a beating along the 40-yard line and was almost standing at the end. Welker is even extremely courageous or extremely dumb. He rarely fair catches. On Thanksgiving Friday, ABC Sports has a great college football doubleheader. Things kick off Friday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Colorado faces number 10 Nebraska at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Number 23 Texas A&M takes on number 15 Texas. That's always a great rivalry. It's all here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. What a show Texas A&M put on last week against Oklahoma. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They look strong. And I saw them against Kansas State when they beat Kansas State upset them. And that was a, an excellent, excellent ball game. Fakes the pitch, throws over the middle into a crowd, and a Here, flag is down. You've got pass interference that's going to be called. I think it's going to be called on Marshall, the linebacker, and it's a kind of a weird situation. You've got the middle screen going. Marshall sees his guy. He grabs onto him. It's right at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure you can have pass interference at the line of scrimmage inside the box. But that's that's where the, the receiver, the running back was, waiting for this pass. They may wait. They call hold it. So I guess no pass interference, but defensive holding will do. Yep. See, watch him as he rushes in. He recognizes that, hey, 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 something's going on here. So he just grabs onto him. Says, hey, where you going, kid? <laughs> then he gets up shaking your head. No, no, no. Well, the official shook back. Ninth time in the ballgame that Texas Tech has been in Oklahoma territory. They have two field goals to show for it. Inside handoff to James Easterling. Not a lot there for the running game. Texas Tech has to get a touchdown. If they have any hope of winning this game, they've got to get a touchdown here, and they have to do it before they get inside the 10-yard line. Once you get inside the 10, your passing ability gets negated to a great deal unless you've got a strong running game. If a team really has to respect your running game, then you can play action and throw it. But with Texas Tech, you don't have to respect their running game, so their passing game becomes ineffective inside the 10. Second down seven at the 27. Kingsbury with pressure, throws outside, pass is complete. But it's going to lose a couple of yards. It goes to Wes Welter. Here we see another pass that's completed, but it's completed right at the line of scrimmage. Why not go to the end zone? They have it from like the 20 or the 30 yard line that area gone deep. I, I don't understand. I think all day long we've seen these short passes when they should be trying to run something. I don't know if Oklahoma is doing something that has in, scared them out of running the deep pass. But they definitely, well, they have to now. They need seven yards for the first down. Welker, three high, seven receptions for 69 yards. Quarterback draw. First down. Kingsbury calling his own number of the quarterback draw. And that's who makes the tackle. That's a, that's a nice
nice play. Here's Kingsbury. He just takes one quick step back, and then he's up. There's a nice hole that the offensive line created. I think Oklahoma might have had a defensive line stunt on that helped them a little bit. But now they're creeping up. Now they're on the 19-yard the line. I think they need to throw it down the field, try to score while they're still a little ways out. Three wide receivers on the near side. High snap. The handoff to Williams, and he's got about four yards on the play, maybe five. Thatcher makes the tackle. Play goes to the 15-yard line. I mean, you can't argue with a five-yard gain, but I don't understand it. I, I think they should be throwing the ball down the field to try to score a touchdown. They know the problems they're going to have once they get inside the 10. 7.25 and count. End zone. It is there. Yes. Touchdown for Texas Tech. Tim Baker, his seventh touchdown of the year. There's Tim Baker again. And again, not a flashy guy, but Tim Baker, you watch him on film time and time and time again. He uses his body so well. He runs very precise routes, and then somehow he always managed to get his body between the defender and the quarterback. So the quarterback can throw it on target, and he makes the catch. A big, big play for Texas Tech. Kingsbury to Heifel. Now with 7.13 to go in the fourth quarter. Extra point is up, and it is good. And it's a 21-13 ball game. Oklahoma 21, Texas Tech 13, back for the kickoff. This is Charlie Jones, Reggie Rivers, 7.13. Time remaining in the ball game. Oklahoma's lead now has been cut. They're out in front of Texas Tech, 21 to 13. Looks like a hand at blackjack. The dealer's got 21. You need an eight, baby. Official call time, step forward. They may want to change the time of the clock. Is that it? They're resetting the oh. game clock. Or the play clock. Great house. Good house. High, short, taken on the run at the 15-yard line to the 20. That's Thatcher on the return. Let's go back to the touchdown. That's it. Kingsbury does a good job stepping up. He spots his man. And see how he just keeps his body. He uses his body so well, Tim Baker does, to kind of shield off the defender and get his hands on the ball. And once he gets his hands on it, it's done. This guy is the leading receiver in the Big 12. I think he's got about 68 receptions so far this year now. You look at the numbers for Kingsbury and Heupel, 35 of 53 for uh, Kingsbury, 17 of 30 for Heupel. Those are just Gaudy numbers on the left-hand side. 53 passes he's thrown already. That's King Ford. Heifel comes out throwing, and he hits Fagan immediately for about four yards. Somebody has thrown an orange onto the field. Right at the feet of the Oklahoma lineman, they threw it off the other side of the field. The orange cometh, the orange goeth away. Second down and six. Good thing they're not going to the Weed Whacker Bowl. <laughs> How would you throw out a dot com? I haven't figured that one out yet. Hypo <laughs> set, throw. Incomplete. Wolfolk, the intended receiver. Monday night, it's a must-win situation for Washington. They face the St. Louis Rams. Deion Sanders, Bruce Smith could be in for a track beat trying to contain Trent Green and his speedy receiver. That's Monday Night Football, live at 9, 8 Central. I think it would be fun to watch Dion taking on some of those receivers for the Rams. See if, you know, he's all he's cracked up to be. Oh, he is. <laughs> Pass is complete for a side and out of bounds. Good work for him. We've got a good day. I might be able to beat Dion one-on-one. -on -one. 
Wolford might like to have a shot. At what? <laughs> at Tiddlywinks. Uh. Wolfric does a good job. He's the, I think he's the outside receiver. He just kind of fades off. Nothing too fancy about it. He gets himself open and Josh hits him. Ball now up to the 42 yard line and it's first down. Inside hand up by the ground game. Nice move by Quentin Griffin. He was going to the right. There was absolutely nothing there. He read it immediately, and he cut back, found a little bit of a bit of a hole, and picked up about four yards. Quentin Griffin is the kind of back, he's sort of in the same mold as someone like, say, Barry Sanders, who is not necessarily going to be the best back if you're running a, a normal eye backfield, but when you're doing something where you can give him the ball and let him move around, he's great. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Eiffel sets and he throws to the 50-yard line. And it's Andre Wolfolk at the, Andre Wolfolk. at the end of the play on the reception. Griffin, speaking of him, now has 12 carries for 46 yards rushing in the ball game. Big play coming up for Texas Tech. Third and about two and a half, three. And if Oklahoma converts this one, now they get a fresh set of downs to run out even more of the clock. Texas Tech needs to stop them here. You have the feeling with the Oklahoma offense, they want to work the clock, they want to continue on a drive, and they do it through the air. Seems as if they're just more comfortable throwing than they are running. And Hyper just makes do. He is such a great athlete, he makes things happen, and that's what the great ones really do. That looked like a jump shot. Curtis he Fagan, the receiver. Kind of runs through, he jumps up in the air, tosses it to the guy that he wants, but there again is that accuracy that has made him so good all year long and has put him on track for the Heisman. And they pick up the first down to the 40-yard line, clock keeps moving, 448 and count. Texas Tech is out of timeouts. Oklahoma has three timeouts remaining. there for Josh Norman. Great play by Antoine Alexander. He stays home and then it's just he and Alexander out in the open field and he makes the tackle. It'll be second down and six. Let's look at our Dell Solutions. Texas Tech, they needed to score 30 points. They haven't. Turnovers, they've had three of them and they can't afford to make those mistakes against Oklahoma. Oklahoma's done a pretty good job of containing Kingsbury, and they have tackled Texas Tech after the catch. They haven't given up too many big plays. From the shotgun, right on target again. Inside the 25, it's Curtis Fagan. 12 yards on the play. Curtis Fagan is an interesting guy. He has no flexibility. They say when he bends over to touch his toes, he can't even get to mid shin. You know, you watch him, he's going to come right over the middle here. But the guy runs a 4 3 40. You wouldn't think someone with that little flexibility could run. Ever since he was a baby, his mom apparently, when she was changing his diaper, she'd lift his legs up and he would start crying because it, was, it hurt too much. Fagan, four reception, 77 yards. out comes back in 22 yard line so he'll pick up a couple on the play Kevin Curtis with the tackle for Texas Tech Oklahoma has had eight different receivers and seven different rushers in the ball game when we talked to Josh yesterday he said that we said who's your favorite receiver he said in this offense you can't have a favorite receiver the ball is going to go all over the field and he goes through his reads, and the first man that he finds open, that's who he goes to. Assuming it's just someone on his own team. Yes, <laughs> with a red jersey today. A crimson. Here comes the blitz, has to get rid of it, and he does, 
and he's on target. He goes to Josh Norman. Josh Norman tackled by his brother, John Norman. That's the first time we see brother, brother hook up. Josh gives his brother a pat on the butt to say, nice tackle. John says, don't talk to me, we're losing. And the ball is at the 18-yard line. It'll be third down and four. The blitz is coming. He does a great job of just getting ready to the ball. Nice catch by Norman, and then a nice tackle by Norman. Beck showing blitz. They step out of it. The high pole is running out of time, and he calls for a timeout. So he takes a timeout, and Oklahoma will have two timeouts remaining. They lead in the ball game by a score of 21 to 13, and we have two minutes and 29 seconds to play. So stay with us. We'll be back to Norman, Oklahoma in just a moment. Two minutes and 29 seconds left for the Oklahoma Sooners. So they're up 21-13. A win here, they win the Big 12 South Championship. That sets up the rematch with Kansas State on December the 2nd for the Big 12 Championship and the next step to the national title. Hyper rolls after the fake, pass is complete. Play goes inside the five yard line. Matt Anderson. His second reception of the ball game. That matches the rest of the season. <laughs> Four on the year. They bring ugly shoes back into the game on another <laughs> key play. Just watch it. He runs a nice little route. He looks like a defensive lineman. Nice catch with his hands and then breaks a tackle and bam, runs over Antoine Alexander. Antoine hangs on. They list him, what, at 6'2", 253? <laughs> That's Man. the size of a defensive tackle yeah. in college. Yeah, it is. This is a this is an interesting uh, scenario with uh, the BCS and the way that they vote and the way that they play against uh, Oklahoma, big favorite here. Looks as if they will go on and win. It could uh, tighten things up, and you've got Florida, Florida State playing uh, each other tonight. And meanwhile, the Sooners they will just score the touchdown, and Griffin goes in to score the TD. 24 and a half point favorites in this one and now we see oranges raining down on the field I expect we're going to have a stoppage in play there are so many oranges being thrown down onto the field but in, in the BCS standings the Sooners come into this game with a pretty good lead they're about had about a five point lead or almost a five point lead on second place but with all the factors that go in strength of schedule all of that um, you know they we don't know what the final score of this one's going to be and we don't know how Texas Tech's schedule is going to be judged they played some pretty tough teams they played they Kansas City and Nebraska and and uh, they're I'm seven, sorry, K State they're, they're seven four coming into the ball game. yeah they are And these are the top five in the BCS standard. So you look at the lead that Oklahoma had coming into this game over Miami. But Miami. These, go ahead. Well, they're going to, the big game tonight is going to happen. Is it, you know what, I, is Florida State Florida are playing tonight? Yeah, well, but, it's, but it's still the oh. undefeated number one. And they win. Right. And they're still undefeated. Yeah, that you, you can't think that they would lose number one. No. And the extra point attempt is blocked. So the score will remain 27 for Oklahoma, 13 for Texas Tech. Griffin scoring his 16th rushing touchdown of the year. And we'll be back right after this. As we come back to Norman, Oklahoma, we continue our conversation about the BCS and the standing. And that's what makes college football so interesting. There's still so many facets and, and so many so many teams still to play each other. And, and also out of the rankings for the or out of the chase for the national title. There's the great matchups. Florida, Florida State tonight's a great matchup. It falls into the national race. This next weekend, Texas, Texas a and it's always a tremendous rivalry. And, and that goes on all over the country, just like they did today. Um, 
in Oregon and Oregon State and SC and UCLA, and it's that's what I think makes college football so much fun and so enjoyable. I think so too, and I think that having all those bowls out there, the teams are they're not going to be national champion, but they're competing to get into all these bowls makes it exciting. It's what you don't have if you have go to a, say a playoff system where you really have teams competing to try to be the play the, the team that's going to win it all in the playoff. The kickoff goes into the end zone for the touchback. And we'll bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. They've got some very soft greens in these end zones. That's about <laughs> the, the third kick that we've seen drop in and just kind of settle down. It does. A yeah. great golf shot. It does hold the chip shot. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report. One minute and 53 seconds. That is the time remaining in this ball game. We know that would be plenty of time for John Elway to score. Texas Tech you know, has, they have a wide open, they just have, they haven't gone vertical with it. Here comes the blitz. And the sack. <laughs> Torrance Marshall. What's the opposite of vertical? <laughs> Horizontal. <laughs> and that's where Kingsbury is. <laughs> You see the replay. I mean, there's just nowhere for him to go. The rush is too strong that time. They bring more guys rushing than they can block, and then Torrance Marshall does a great job of beating his man to get in. Heineke, Callas join Marshall. Throws very quickly. Pass is complete. Up the sidelines and out of bounds, stopping the clock. 26-yard line. Derek Doris makes the play. 1.16 time remaining in the ballgame. 15 yards on the play. Now they've run this play all day long, and you know what what makes it work is not so much that it's a surprise, a surprise that they run it, but they have good execution at the point of attack. Those other receivers out there really do a good job of blocking. Third down and four at the 26-yard line. Now this time, passing underneath the coverage. Williams. And that'll be the first down at the 31-yard line. That stops the clock while they move the chain. He got that first down, but he ran backward for a little while. You know, third and four, you want to make sure you get the first down. You try to make the big play on the next play. Oklahoma's not set defensively. Now we go. High snap, pull down. On the run, incomplete. Pressure was coming. Ante Jones applying the pressure. 55 seconds left. Second down and 10 at the 31. And Oklahoma is, you know, they over the course of this season, they have shown all that they need to show as a championship team. They come from behind to win. They hold on to win. They've done it all. And today, I think we really have to compliment their defense. Their defense has done a truly outstanding job against the, uh, the offensive attack of the Red Raiders. Downfield, it is on target. It is complete. First down at the 47-yard line. Darnell Jones pulls it in. 21 yards on the play. 47 seconds now left in the ball game. After every play, that defensive unit is looking up at the clock saying, all right, how many more seconds? How many more seconds? The clock starts ticking again now. I need a, I need Four a wide receivers. Kingsbury throws, and it is incomplete. At the 42-yard line, going to Doris. Now with 35 seconds left. Defending the Sooners was Torrance Marshall. Today, Chevrolet players of the game, and we're going to salute Kingsbury and Thatcher. Second and 10. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund so congratulations to those two players and congratulations to chevrolet on a great program i really admire that program they've had it for many many years tim baker making the play for texas tech now 30 seconds left kingsbury, in the ball game kingsbury has certainly done a great job for texas tech and you know that's a, a good award for thatcher he's had kind of an up and down game but he has certainly made some of the big plays that have, have made it for his team. He had the one kickoff return that got called back on a penalty, unfortunately. The quick out to the near side is complete. Clock will continue to run. 
60th pass ties the career high for Kingsbury. That was Francis. He pulled it in. 15 seconds and counting. And Kingsbury calls them together. He wants to try one more time. Six seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. One. They stop it with one second left. They stop it in deference, I believe, to the oranges that come on the field. They call it sportsman life. And they're, they're calling it, I believe you're right, on the fans. That's the only thing the officials can do. In a game like this, it really doesn't matter. Their team's not going to lose. But imagine in a tight game where the fans are throwing something on the field, if they know the penalty is going to go against their team, yeah. then they're less likely That's to do right. it. And speaking of oranges, tonight in Florida, Florida and Florida State on ABC. That, uh, that winds up the triple header today, and that's a great one to end it with. It's been a good one here today. We should pick one team to be the Republicans, one team to be the Democrats. <laughs> Whoever wins, wins. Yes. <laughs> It'll probably go into like triple or quadruple overtime. Which, uh, it already is. <laughs> Kingsbury. Underneath the coverage, pass is complete. He goes to Williams. And that is it. Oklahoma, number one, and looking like number one. And they continue to be the only undefeated team in Division One with their victory over Texas Tech. Head coach Bob Stoops and... Uh, The final is 27, Oklahoma 13 for Texas Tech. And it was the Oklahoma defense that time and time again kept turning back the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The Raiders' offense is explosive, but they need to attach a running game, particularly when they get inside of the 10-yard line. They were unable to do that today, primarily because the running game is not part of their strength, but probably more so because the strength of the Oklahoma Sooners, today at least and other days throughout this season, has been their defense. People always ask for, what's the difference between the Oklahoma offense this year and the Oklahoma offense last year. We talked to Bob Stoops, the head coach yesterday. He said the running game. Last year they were about 67%. Now they're 50-50. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go away. Oklahoma wins it 27-13. to 13.